Jack Swarbrick is a genius. And for a very long time, I thought Jack Swarbrick was a dumbass. But he's not. He is a certified genius. Because when the 12-team college football playoff begins in 2024, he has perfectly positioned Notre Dame. Perfectly positioned Notre Dame to get as far as possible in a 12-team playoff. And it's really genius once you uncover just the, the sheer thought that went into it. Because for a very long time, people mocked Jack Swarbrick and said, like, you realize that the top four slots are reserved for the top four conference champions. And if you are new to college football, Notre Dame not in a conference. So, therefore, the best they can be, the highest seed they can be in a college football playoff, is fifth. And you would think that that would put them at a horrendous disadvantage. That there are four other schools that get buys to the next round of the college football playoff when Notre Dame has to play a game. And you would think that the best you could do is fifth would be horribly detrimental to your chances of winning the college football champ national championship. But I don't know that it is because when you consider the way that Notre Dame may be considered the college football playoff that nobody else did. It gives them an inherent advantage should the chips fall the way Notre Dame would like them to fall. Because you see, if the best you can do is fifth, Notre Dame, in all likelihood, more often than not, if they're going to be a college football playoff national a college football playoff contender, it's because they are 11 and 1. 12 and 0, 10 and 2, somewhere in there. Should Notre Dame be ranked fifth in the college football playoff final rankings, they would play a first round game against the number 12 seed, obviously. Eight versus nine, five versus 12, six versus 11, seven versus 10. And then the top four get a bye. But in that scenario, what are the chances that the fourth ranked team? is really the eighth-ranked team or the ninth-ranked team, but they get the number four seed because they won their conference championship. Probably pretty high. And this all came to, like, Andy Staples, who I have a lot of respect for, uh, put out his projection college, projected college football playoff teams today. And in his number four seed, he had Kansas State. And people lost their damn minds. of like, can't you think Kansas State's going to go 12-0? and oh, You're ridiculous, blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. That's not what that means at all, because in a 12-team playoff with the four top conference champions getting a bye, it doesn't matter what the record is from the number four school, because almost always, almost always, the champion of the Big 12, ACC, SEC, or Big 10 even if they entered the conference championship game as a gigantic underdog is going to be ranked ahead of the champion who represents the group of five, whether it's the Sunbelt mountain West Mac conference USA or American. I think we can agree on that, that if Kansas state goes, if Kansas state is nine and four after the conference championship game in Liberty is 12 and oh, who's ranked higher. Probably Kansas State still. So in that scenario, let's say Notre Dame maxes out their potential. They are the number five seed. They would play conceivably the group of five representative in the 12 slot. So not only do you get the team that is viewed as the weakest team in the field, because that's just how college football operates now in 2024 is that if you are in the group of five, you are not going to be viewed as on par or better than your power five brethren, power four brethren. Now it's just not going to be how you're viewed. And, and that's probably in likelihood, the reality of the situation. So as the five seed Notre Dame gets to face, obviously by ranking the worst team in the field, 
that's a pretty advantageous spot to be in. But the, the winner of the 512 doesn't move on to play the number one seed. They move on to play the number four seed. So after playing the worst team in the field, you then get the worst conference champion too. So in this scenario, Notre Dame could go 12 and 0 and be the number five seed, play the number 12 seed, who is the group of five representative, and then play an eight and four conference champion, a nine and three conference champion. You're favored in your first two matchups in the college football playoff by being a lower seed in the second game against a conference champion because they set it up to where we are never going to be one through four. That's a really advantageous spot to be in like that. I don't think anybody thought about that or recognized that at the time. It's certainly, I never heard it brought up when it came up that like, Hey, the top four spots reserved for conference champs, because all we talked about was how dumb Notre Dame was to have not joined a conference because you're never going to get that first round by. Well, is a first round by worth trading for one, getting to play the worst team in the college football playoff if you're the five seed, and then two, getting to play the worst conference champion? Because in, theoretically, if Notre Dame goes 12-0 and 0 and is the number five seed, and I realize there's a lot of hypotheticals, theoreticals in this situation, but just follow with me here. If Notre Dame goes 12-0 and 0 and the best they are is number five, they have a path to the semifinals that could not be easier if they were really a one through four seed. If you're the one seed, you have to play an eight and nine. And in, all, in a lot of possibilities, the eight or nine is better than the number four team that won a conference championship. Because an eight or nine in 2024 could be could be Penn State, could be Ole Miss, could be Tennessee, Oregon, somebody like that, where the number four seed could be Kansas State, could be Texas Tech, could be anybody from the Big 12, anybody from the ACC, if somebody's to knock off Florida State in the conference championship game, could be Miami. Would you rather play Boise State, Liberty, Tulane in the first round? Or would you rather play Penn State? Would you rather play Ole Miss, Tennessee, Oregon in the second round? So it's Notre Dame gets an advantage by being number five. And I guess it's not just Notre Dame. It's anybody who plays at a really high level but doesn't win the conference championship. Anybody who goes 12 and one or 11 and two and loses the conference championship game. Whoever is the five seed sits really well in the college football playoff because you're facing more often than not the group of five conference champion, the, the best ranked group of five conference champion. And then you're playing the worst ranked conference champion of the power four. Now, your reward at the end of the day is to play the number one ranked team should they make it to the semifinals. But you know what? <laughs> Making it to the semifinals is going to be viewed as a success no matter who you are, I think, more often than not. So while we ran down Notre Dame for being too proud to join a conference and that like the trade-off was like, oh, the best you can do is number five in the college football playoff, really stupid. You should get your priorities straight because right now they're crooked. When you look at the whole picture and you see when it's put in there that somebody could be the number four ranked team at eight and four, or I guess could be eight and five, could be nine and four, could be 10 and three, and Notre Dame could be 12 and 0 oh, and the favorite because they're the five seed. They're set up really, really well for the college football playoff and not just Notre Dame, but for a lot of schools that are that number five seed are in a good spot. But Notre Dame purposely put themselves in that position where if the best they could do is number five and they reached that figure, that it is absolutely 100% a best case scenario for them and not the other way around that I think we viewed it for a really long time. 
That'll do it for today's episode of The Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content that we are pumping out. If you are listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of The Daily Huddle here on Saturday Glory.